Welcome to the news. It has been weeks. We're on months, no, months since you have been given the privilege of hearing <laughs> the news from us. Today, we're coming from a different perspective. It's a new year. It's the new start of a beautiful year, and we'll get right into it. Would you like to start? When was it last year that we started the news? Uh, February. February. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's coming up on one year. Yeah. And we'll season two. We'll I like that. This will be season two. Okay. So I'll start it out, even though I just asked you if you wanted to start oh, it out. Nice outfit, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad we coordinated the ties and the it's shirts. It's a good thing you wore a striped uh, shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how this is coming out on video, but we're going to start with a general news of the market. So I have three items that people, including ourselves, are Great. following about the market because everyone wants to know how's the market. So there's three areas that you look at when it comes to the market. And each area is a totally different area. But the first one is how many sales are getting done, number one. Number two is how many homes or inventory is getting built. Mm -hmm. And then number three is obviously the in the ability uh, inventory that's currently on the market. So new inventory, current inventory, and then you obviously add in rates. So how would you say the general marketplace with those metrics are, say, in New York City and then nationally? Rates, inventory, and... New, the new amount of deals sales. that oh, are okay. getting done. Uh, Existing inventory, new inventory, <laughs> and then we can add in rates. Okay, I would say deals are happening. Yep. I would say rates are high. And I would say that inventory is steady. Okay. And new homes. <laughs> yeah, new homes coming on the market are... No, new builds. New builds. Yeah, new, new developments. I've been seeing actually some more inventory yeah. on those coming online. Uh, I do feel like the new developments have uh, lowered their prices actually to a very attractive yeah. rate, which which hurts the resellers <laughs> because yeah. the people that are looking to resell that had these high expectations because of the neighboring apartments are now seeing like, wait a second, those super luxury brand new builds are at the price point that I wanted. So the experienced developers are kind of leading the way with realistic pricing. Yeah, yeah. And, and then nationally, so the, it was from Realtor.com, the article, and they say nationally, the amount of homes getting built is down. The amount of inventory is very low. The amount of deals are very low. So it's very interesting. And what they were saying was that the amount of days on market are going up nationally. So uh, New York City is its own beast, to say the least. Well, I, <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> I, I did notice the article that is nationwide that deal activity was the lowest last year since yeah. 1995. Yep. So you would have to think that there is going to be some sort of bounce back from that. I don't think that this year I was will nine. also be the same. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 30 you years a real estate license back then? <laughs> Uh, okay, well, my article is on the flagship wars going on on Fifth Avenue. You might have heard a little bit about that in my newsletter. Uh, but there are big purchases being made by some of the top luxury brands. They're not only leasing their uh, uh, retail spaces on Fifth Avenue, they are actually purchasing them. And both Prada and Gucci, among others, uh, have bought the buildings that yeah. they are in, which uh, was very interesting. I mean, these are these are record breaking deals. These are huge purchases, some of the biggest purchases in retail made since pre COVID. So the top of retail was in about 2015. And you're wondering if this is the bottom if we've already seen the bottom during COVID and this is the rebound, because those are some big rebounds. Uh, what are the numbers? Purchases. Do you have any numbers? Uh, the Gucci uh, store, they actually bought the whole building, but it has three levels of retail at least. And it was uh, a little over 900 million. Wow. And then there was Prada who bought two places, but mainly their flagship store was the one that they ended up purchasing. That was something like 500 million and uh, probably a little bit less. But it's going to say 900 million. That's a big purchase. Yeah. And it was for right. 
a foot, which, wow. you know, is, uh, the, you know, the positives about that is that you never have to deal with a landlord again. Yeah. You know, all of those expenses also are a write off. Um, that is there, they own it now. So there are a lot of advantages to that. But then when I was thinking about it, you know, there for every buyer, there is a seller. And it, funny enough, both of those sales were done by the same person, the same seller. Wow. He owned both of those. Wow. So he sees some uh, excitement. He's probably very excited to see, you know. Uh, <laughs> he might go shopping for dollars. residential. Yeah, maybe he'll go shopping at one of those flagship stores. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, article number three is it's old news, but it just got kicked in this year, January 1st. Obviously, that is a month ago. But the new Rebney Commission, which I know ah. some people have had some experience in the office of asking what's going on with that. So essentially in the past or before January 1st, the listing agent would split their commission 50, 50, or in the very least, the listing agent would get less than the buyer's agent. You couldn't get hmm. more. I know outside of the city is chaos in the wild, wild west. And the listing agent would take 4% and 2% would go to the buyer's agent. And there's, I, I read it yesterday. There's two dozen lawsuits, twenty over 24 lawsuits against the National Association of Realtors. So I don't know how they're affording their attorneys. And there's less agents, so their dues are down. So mm. I don't know what's going on with that. And then a new organization was just um, created and pioneered by the agency's founder, uh, Mauricio. So it's going to be a very oh, interesting year. Yeah, it's oh. going to be a very interesting year. I didn't really like the name of it, though. It what was like it? the American Real Estate. Da, da, da. I'm like, come on. National Association of Realtors? That sounds awesome. NAR. <laughs> so hopefully they stay in business. Uh, and interesting. Yeah, so in New York City, they have dropped the, and I we just updated our marketing paperwork that we send to sellers. So it shows what are you paying if there's a buyer's agent? What are you paying if there's not a buyer's agent? And then uh, what are you paying us? So the seller pays the commission. I know you think it's going to change a lot. I don't think it's going to change a lot. I don't think, well, I don't think buyers will know. pay their buyer's agent. We won't know the change until a year from now. Yeah. Because right now it's very easy to just say very there's, new. A new, there's a new agreement. It's the same structure as it was before. You just have to write out these things. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody's like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And the whole lawsuit, just to get into it real quick, is because I looked into it. It's kind of incredible because they, they won a $6 billion lawsuit. Whoever the plaintiffs are, are, you know, ironically enough, their attorneys are getting paid a percentage of that. And that's what they're complaining about. But it, it's kind of crazy that they won because their whole thing was that there was a monopoly on commission when there's so many websites out there trying to disrupt. You have for sale by owner.com, you have Zillow and Street yeah. Easy and purple bricks and I've heard all of these, red fin. Uh, these analogies. It's funny, you know, the, the comment section, they're always like, you know, brokers saying, well, when you go to the doctor, you have to pay for the service. The one I liked was, you know, you can change your oil yourself, but you usually go to a mechanic to yeah. have them change the oil. I yeah. mean, there's so many of those that it's uh, kind of funny. And yeah, I mean, you've always been able to sell your home on your own. So I don't see why there's much of a monopoly over that. But yeah. Uh, we'll see. That'll be tied up for years. Yep. But you know what? Sidebar, there was a very funny real uh, lawsuit that happened on one of the firms in New York, mainly uh, real estate uh, rentals. And apparently I read that they had to pay out a fine recently. And it was because one of these uh, agents charged something like 25% on a rent stabilized apartment or something wow. like that. Like. And so they didn't get a big payout like $6 billion, but they did get a uh, billion. No, 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 not I know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They got a couple hundred thousand, but it's That's uh, enough. pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. Pay for the fee. Especially for the brokerage. I mean, think of the brokerage was the one who's liable. For yeah. That. So yeah. Uh, your fourth article. Fourth article is on, uh, is it better? Is it more expensive to live in the city or commute from Connecticut? 
Wow. <laughs> it was a very detailed article. They really broke it down piece by piece by piece. And uh, I thought it was really funny. Obviously, it caught my eye because I uh, live in or did live in Connecticut. 203. So um, they went through the property taxes, the insurance even, uh, prices, everything. And uh, cost of living, unsurprisingly, it's more expensive to live in New York City. <laughs> I was actually going through so some of the costs. The yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking you have car, you might have car park, and then you have the Metro North. The amount of time as well. Well, and also the real estate taxes are actually more. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Because you live in a house. So, but the prices are usually higher. So, and you have much no, more No, the space. prices are lower. Yeah, in, in New York. That's what I yeah, mean. Yeah, it yeah. was like offsetting that. So if you're ever interested in moving into the suburbs, you should read that article. And uh, it was kind of funny. And if you're looking to move into the city, you contact us. I like that. Ending. Yes. Very good, absolutely. Charles. So the news for this week has ended and hopefully you got some of that. If you are looking to move to the city, the contact is below. Share, like, Subscribe. comment, whatever you'd See like you to do. See you next week.